This is how a Shinkansen bullet train factory is made in Japan. This is how they make them. So today we are in Hamamatsu Shizuoka and I got a special one for you. I'm taking you to a Shinkansen bullet train factory today and I'm going to take you on a full tour. So I've More never done content. this before, I've never gone inside of a train factory. In fact, I've kind of always wanted to do this and now today we get to do it. So I'm super, super excited for this. But before I start, if you guys want to see what I'm doing on the daily, then check out my Instagram account. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my Japan merch. And if you have any questions about Japan or Japan travels, then check out my Discord community. Hey bro, come on. So I'm here at the JR Central Hamamatsu Workshop, aka Train Factory. It's the one and only location in Japan that conducts a complete overhaul inspection that fully disassembles, repairs, and reassembles the Tokaido Shinkansen bullet trains, the most popular and busiest train line in Japan. It started as a repair shop in 1912 for steam locomotives, and over time as technology evolved, so did the workshop, servicing trains across the ages from electronic locomotives, electric trains, and now Shinkansen. Today, there are a total of about 1,300 hardworking JR Central staff and affiliated workers who come together at the workshop to ensure that all of their Shinkansen trains are operated at peak performance and safety. And what do you know, I'm the first YouTube content creator to ever visit this workshop, so we're going Shinkansen long with this one. All right, so I've made it inside, but today I think I'm gonna be wearing something a little bit different. Let's see what I'm gonna wear. There you go, let's go inside of the factory now. So I've got my helmet on, time to find the trains. We're wearing the same thing. Hi, can you show me inside? Wow, the Shinkansen workshop is so massive, and why I want to call it a train factory or even train maintenance plant to better capture its scale. The entire property is about 318,000 square meters, just over 78 acres. Oh, there's a Shinkansen coming into the plant. Right oh, after the look train at how arrives, good it goes through its first inspection and diagnostic, which determines what types of extra maintenance and look service is required. Look how sexy that thing looks so pulling in, in dude. Yeah, let's see what's going on here. That's a big boy. What a beaut. After the initial inspection, the train is ushered into the Mai Sagyoba, pre-maintenance area. A Shinkansen train usually consists of 16 carriage cars, but coming to this area, it's already been separated into four stripped-down carriage cars. In order to maintain and service the Shinkansen, the workers must take it apart section by section and then piece by piece, as each must go through a strict and rigorous inspection process. This requires for each piece to be transported to various areas of the plant so different teams can work on the different sections simultaneously. Hence, the requirement for so much space. In fact, the workers are divided into four teams, body, parts, undercarriage, and inspection, and each worker required to master a unique set of skills for their section before being allowed to service the train. Oh, they're disassembling the seats now. It seems like there's a lot for them to do. In fact, there's so much work that takes place in the Maya Sagyoba that it requires about 60 workers to finish one carriage. Wow, everything's gone. So I'm inside of the train right now and you can see that it's all taken apart. It's pretty awesome. Do they do this in America? Like, I doubt it, dude. I mean, maybe they do. I'm sure they do it in America, too. They inspect the trains like this, right? Maybe not like the daily commuter trains like these ones, but it just seems insane. It's definitely not New York. Now, I'm not talking about MTA, okay? I know they don't even have, like, I'm, I'm talking like the Long Island uh, uh, Railroad, you know what I mean? Like the LIRR, that one has like more expensive seats and shit. Oh, cool. Let's go see what's up here. Yeah, every minute a train is parked, a million dollars of unrealized profit is lost. Exactly. Fuck. So I'm just above the train right now. I climbed the stairs and you can see it's a little bit dirty, but by the time it gets out of here, it's gonna be polished and cleaned up. I want to Once see the that. four carriage cars have been stripped, they're individually separated and moved to the dismantling warehouse. So I think I've just arrived a little bit early, but the train should be coming here and they're gonna separate the body and the wheelbase. In I like the Long the Island Railroad. It was very tracks, pleasant. They're attached to powerful orange vehicles called train pullers, which can pull up to four carriages at one time. Oh, and that's a traverser, which moves the trains from one warehouse to the next. Damn, I don't know what it is though, but for some reason, watching a Shinkansen moving laterally is so mesmerizing. 
depending on the warehouse location, the entire moving process could take up to 15 minutes. To say the least, it's a massive effort to move these train cars, so it's always performed slowly and cautiously to ensure safety of all of the workers. The Hamamatsu Workshop Factory works on up to four Shinkansen at one time. In fact, they inspect and repair about 50 Shinkansen, 800 carriages each year. At the CTA. Okay, wait, hold on. Let's look at this real, real quick. And reliability are top priority inspections and maintenance work that is done to keep each train car in good working shape. Cars and their onboard systems are thoroughly checked for function and passenger comfort before they go into service. In this behind the scenes video, we'll explain the inspections, repairs, and troubleshooting measures we take to keep you safe and our fleet rolling. My name is Devlin Wilkes. I'm a Rail Maintenance Manager 1. And what I do is annual inspections on 2,600 cars. Annual. They do the inspections annually. I mean, did they say, did, did Paolo say that they were doing it annually too? Cars. My name is Arthur Scales Sr. My title is RTO. Before train operators leave the terminal, they perform a series of pre-checks on their train before departing, including walking the train to look for issues inside or outside each car, including any issues. Bro, there's no, it's like a joke. It's like a joke. I'm sorry. No disrespect to the wonderful people that are working in this, uh, in this uh, field, but that's, bro, he just, he just gave it a fucking gut check, dude. He, oh, come on. He just walked through it and was like, all right, <laughs> where's the little hammer, man? Why aren't they disassembling them? We look at them versus disassemble them completely. Why is he not taking every part apart? The fuck's going on? Choose with signs, lights, doors, temperature, cleanliness, or vandalism. If I'm a rail operator and I'm starting my shift, I will go to my head car and I will key up my rail car and look at what are my safety things? I would check my windshield wipers. I would make certain that my headlights are working. I would check my exterior lights along the side to make certain that they are illuminating and going out. I would cycle my doors from this car to make certain that they, all the doors and the consoles are opening and closing on both the cab side, the non-cab side. Our fleet started in 1981, which make that car. Wait, that's literally a 37 year old train car that they're still working with. God damn. To be fair, like, that's one good thing about trains is that, like, you don't need to fully, you don't need to fully modernize it or anything. I mean, it still goes. I was 37 years old. On each car, we have two PIUs, passenger intercon units. If a rider gets on a hot car in the summertime or a cold car in the wintertime, all you have to do is go and punch that button and I will take care of that problem. If I come back there and I can't get heat in that car, I'm going to evacuate that car so nobody will get on that car. An operator would do is call and control and report this cool. as a defect. And at the next I love opportunity him. to pull this car off the road, that's what we're going to do. Bring it in the shop and inspect it and make it safe for our guests. In addition to the things that we do when the cars come into the shop, uh, rail engineers determine um, what type of overhauls we need to do um, based on trends that we see based on wear and tear of the vehicles. Uh, for example, we change out the wheel assemblies probably every six months because the wheel constantly grind down as they're riding on a running rail. And so wheel, wheel assemblies are changed out. Uh, we look at the control groups and see that if the switches are defective, if the wiring inside of the group are constantly burning and decaying, we do an overhaul to maintain the safety and efficiency of these fleets. What we do on these cars is what's called periodic inspections and annual inspections. And an annual inspection is a more of a surgical procedure where we are dropping trucks, we are looking in between things that you just can't see on a normal basis. We take eight hours to look at one car to make certain that it is safe, it is replenished, and it can go out for service. 
number one thing that CTA tries to implement and instill in everyone that works here is safety. We take safety to the highest level at CTA. We will never, ever release a car that we know that is unsafe for our customers. Our trains travel about 230,000 miles, about seven times the circumference of the Earth at its equator. On a typical weekday, year-round, and the talented and well-trained people in yards, shops, terminals, and who operate service are why this is possible, even with some of our cars nearing 40 years of age. In addition to the continual work we do to prevent and mitigate... When I hear eight hours, I think that's seven hours too long, okay? I'm just saying, why eight hours when you could do it in one? You know what I mean? Like uh, annually, maybe, why not, uh, you know, once every two years? I'm just saying. Delays and innovate new strategies to keep our trains rolling. We're also making historic investments in the system, including replacing old rail cars with new ones. We've also added the recent 5000 series, which replaced nearly half our fleet and a new 7000 series. Is I heard this one's nice, right? In 2020. By the way, this is the 7000 series and even their like latest and greatest is still ugly as fuck and nowhere near the level of comfort you're, you're going to get. I mean, I, I guess it's fine. That the carriage is safely secured inside of the dismantling warehouse, a new team of workers can start their tasks. First, the entire train carriage is raised up via specifically designed lifts to allow for safe undercarriage access. These powerful machines can lift a train that weighs up to 40 tons, about two and a half meters high. Let's go talk to that person. Hi, what are you doing? Hi, lifting So what's your favorite thing about this entire process? Shinkansen's are not commuter trains. They're used for long distance travel. Big distinction to make, by the way. Yeah, I, get, I understand. Thank you. I want to know what the... Like what are what are the daily commuter trains inside of the cities look like in Japan? They probably look similar to the 7000, right? Once fully lifted, the workers begin to separate the train body from the undercarriage as well as the removal of underfloor equipment. Again, all these sections and parts are destined for a separate warehouse in the plant. And what's truly amazing about this process is how much, even with such a massive scale transportation vehicle like a Japanese bullet train, is performed by worker technical skill and hand. Each worker though is required to engage in a two and a half month training program at the start of their career, culminating into a strict in-house test certification that must be passed, plus any additional training and licenses for jobs like a crane operator, ultimately facilitating an efficient and safe working environment. Damn, look at that train puller go! It guides the undercarriage into this orange undercarriage traverser, which automatically transports them into a neighboring warehouse for inspection and maintenance. undercarriage has been detached, the workers focus on disassembling the electronics and other equipment under the carriage. This is a critical part in the process as the workers must be diligent in taking inventory of all the parts removed to ensure- They're censoring that bad boy, you know what I mean? They don't want us to see the good parts. I see what you're doing, Paolo. Hmm. Come on, man. Show us the trussy. What do I gotta do? Do I gotta go to the Patreon to see that? Huh? Give us the lewds, Paolo. I wanna see. I want to see that Shinkusi, if you know what I'm saying. Shinkankusi? Shinkansusi? Sure that not a single piece is misplaced. As an important piece of their workflow, workers use specialized tablets to track each individual part and information about each part so that it properly gets maintained and reassembled in the correct location. Only, yeah, only trams. At the same time, smaller parts like bolts and screws are generally replaced with new ones. So before we continue on, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this video. This place literally is just blowing me away. It is a so, so massive. There's just so much space. But I guess it makes sense when you're dealing with so many trains that come through here. They lubed that bad boy up. 
That dirty, <laughs> dirty. You can see just behind me, they're taking the wheels that off. That dirty the girl got <laughs> lubed up. Daisha in Japanese is composed of the frame chassis, wheels, axles, and motors. In order for the undercarriage to be fully inspected, each part must be disassembled to separately undergo its own exhaustive testing. As the components are separated, they're sent to diagnostics, and parts like the axles are inspected via ultrasonic sensors, magnetic particles, and fiberscope to ensure it's free from defects while wheels are turned and reprofiled with an accuracy of a tenth of a millimeter. Even the smallest of components, such as the bearings, are inspected. Oh wow, that giant orange crane is used for lifting up the frame. All right, let's see what's going on here. Oh, this is their undercarriage operation inspection room. Once all of the undercarriage components pass their individual inspections... Bro, my horny ass would not make it in the Shinkansen bullet train factory, okay? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> They're reassembled to make a complete undercarriage, which then undergoes a running test at speeds of 300 kilometers per hour or about 806 miles per hour, the same top speed the Shinkansen would operate on their fastest stretch on the Sanyo line. Hi, can I ask you some questions? Hi. What are you doing? Does it ever fail? What do you do when that happens? So is there anything you need to be really careful about when doing this task? Yeah, make sure it's fucking tight. Make sure that bad girl is tight, dude. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Once the automated test has run its course and the undercarriage receives a passing result, it must then undergo a manual inspection in order to move on to the next stage. And this is where all of the disassembled equipment and parts are cleaned and repaired. Ah, so this fucking is tight. Let's see what's behind that door over there. Hey guys, what are you doing? Why do you have to do this? Looking spiffy. This room is where the pantograph gets inspected and maintained. You know, the top part of the train that connects to the electrical power lines? Interestingly, all of the components used for equipment inspection and repair are prepared in advance and a component such as bolts and packaging are preset in a fixed position in dedicated trays. In total, there are about 450 different component kit trays to help manage parts and about 300 unique trays are used in one day. Oh God, I do love the organizing, dude. It's insane. It's insane. The level of organizing that they're demonstrating here is just, oh my fucking Lord, dude. Wild shit. Look at this. Even every single tool has their spot. So I'm right in front of the lead Shinkansen train and it's going to be polished right now. After the body is thoroughly cleaned and repaired, it's transferred to the Toso warehouse, body paint. So this giant transparently walled area is where the Shinkansen body gets polished. The Shinkansen is so massive that automated robot arms are used to ensure that the paint is applied evenly. And just before this, the lead car of the Shinkansen receives a specialized automated polishing treatment in this specific area due to its unique aerodynamic shape. The polishing creates a more adhesive surface for the paint application. The Ooh, God damn! area that's more equipped for standard sidewalls and roof polishing. Looks like the body and the wheelbase has been reattached. This is the Gisaba warehouse, aka assembly area. Here, the newly painted body, undercarriage, and undercarriage equipment are reassembled. Also, any components previously removed from the carriage interior are reinstalled to create one functioning train car. Once all of the work is complete, it's moved to the final departure warehouse. 
By the way, each train must pass four levels of periodic inspection, with each level becoming more and more exhaustive, so inspections are performed every 48 hours. Then, every 60,000 kilometers, about 45 days. After that, every 600,000 kilometers, about 18 months. And finally, at 1.2 million kilometers, or every 36 months. Which again is the most detailed inspection, as it's a complete teardown, repair, and rebuild, taking- Wait, what? That's- I don't even understand, dude. What the fuck? No, I mean, is that even necessary at that point? Like, that's literally, dude, they treat this shit. They straight up treat this shit like it's a, I mean, not even passenger aircrafts have this level of inspection, I feel like. I feel like some of these things they don't even do for redundancy, but just a flex on us. Bro, I don't think they think about us at all. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I think they're just on their own shit, you know? They're just vibing on their own. They're not even... They're just living their best damn lives, dude. They found a bunch of people. <laughs> they found a bunch of A-worded people who love doing this. <laughs> they're working for free out there about 14 days to fully complete and the very inspection that I'm showing you today. The traverser requires two train workers for operation, one on each end to ensure safety. Today, there are a total of three workers as one of them is a trainee being instructed on how to safely operate the vehicle. So this is where the individual carriages are finally joined to form one fully functioning and operational 16 car Shinkansen bullet train. The recoupling process is performed slowly and carefully as the workers make small adjustments by hand to ensure a safe and secure connection. Thank you. After the train is reconnected, workers reaffix the connecting panels and electrical cables between the carriages. And from here, the Shinkansen must still undergo an additional 1400 tests in 117 different categories to ensure it's working properly and safe for passengers to ride. So they're doing their final inspections right now at the factory, and after that, the train is gonna leave. As part of the final test, the Shinkansen performs a test run and operates between Hamamatsu and Nagoya. To further ensure a safe and comfortable ride for passengers, the final test includes items such as acceleration, deceleration, stopping, vibration in the cabin, and cabin air pressure and tunnels. Only after fully passing all of these tests is the Shinkansen bullet train reintroduced into operation. So that's how a Shinkansen factory is made in Japan. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button if you guys want to see more videos like this. Fuck, dude. Okay, now wait, 20 years for California high-speed rail and then compete? Yeah. We're never getting that, dude. I'm sorry. Japan only had five rail derailments, uh, train rail derailments in 2022. Yeah.